Are you also one of those who cry over the death of dinosaurs? Relax, I won't talk about the story of the Psittacosaurus babies trapped in its nest in China. Today, you'll find out surprising facts about one of the most famous giants of the Jurassic. 15 Diplodocus Facts You Have to Know Number 1. Viral Dinosaur I wasn't exaggerating when I said that the Diplodocus is very famous thanks to movies, documentaries, video games, and more. Two statues of young Diplodocus in front of a painting of an adult Diplodocus heard appear briefly in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You can also see it in Ark Survival Evolved, whose popularity has made one of the most searched phrases on the internet be how to tame a Diplodocus in Ark. During a Fortnite game, British YouTuber Ali A referred to this dinosaur as Diplodoculus during a game. What's the name of this guy again? I forgot. Diplodoculus, isn't it? There's a Diplodoculus! This went viral and triggered an outpouring of funny content. Diplodocus. There's a Diplodoculus! Number 2. Genus Diplodocus. When you talk about the Diplodocus, it also means to talk about a genus of dinosaurs of the Diplodocid sauropod group, characterized by very long necks, long tails, small heads, and four thick legs. This group includes the Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, and Brontosaurus, and of course, the Diplodocus. These have a notably thinner build than other sauropods, as evidenced by the remains of the two established species of Diplodocus, Diplodocus carnegii and Diplodocus holorum. Both lived in what's now Midwestern North America in the late Jurassic. And yes, the Diplodocus carnegii is named after Andrew Carnegie, but I'll tell you about the second part of this story later. Number 3. The Longest of All I know you've already seen that the Diplodocus is the largest dinosaur that ever existed. Yes, it's true that this buddy has an enormous and remarkable size. 108 feet long, more or less the length of three buses in a row. However, there are two other great titans that give it a fight. There's the 121 feet long Patago Titan or the 130 foot long Argentinosaurus. This doesn't make it less magnificent. A worthy Diplodocus specimen had about 80 vertebrae in its tail, while the Argentinosaurus probably only had 10 dorsal vertebrae. Plus, the neck of Diplodocus carnegii alone was at least 21 feet long. Number 4. Unusual Teeth the Diplodocus has teeth very different from other sauropods. It had a series of small, peg-shaped teeth grouped at the front of its mouth and pointing forward. This means that its feeding behavior was to pull branches using one side of the mouth. Also, their teeth were thin and delicate. According to a 2013 study in the scientific journal PLOS One, the Diplodocus replaced its teeth every 35 days. This high replacement rate suggests that it ate abrasive foods such as soft plants containing silica or sand-covered plants on the ground. Studies also reveal that it preferred different vegetation than other sauropods in the same region. This may have allowed the various species of this group of dinosaurs to coexist without major problems. Number 5. Apatosaurus vs. Diplodocus These two are often confused. In fact, the Apatosaurus and Diplodocus are very similar physically. Both are diplocated sauropods, the Diplodocus belonging to the Diplodocinae subfamily, and the Apatosaurus belongs to the Apatosaurinae subfamily. Did we say they're like cousins? Well, the truth is that both coexisted in Western North America during the late Jurassic period. If you pay attention to the details revealed in the fossils, you'll notice that their square skulls are similar. In addition, both are characterized by long necks and tails and a horizontal posture, with forelimbs shorter than hind limbs. However, the cervical vertebrae of the Apatosaurus are less elongated and heavier than the Diplodocus. Plus, the leg bones are sturdier despite being longer, implying that the Apatosaurus was more massive. As you know, the Diplodocus was more slender. Can you tell them apart now? Number 6. It could submerge its head The Diplodocus swept away everything. Apparently, the Diplodocus' neck was very flexible and some scientists believe that its range of motion allowed it to graze with its head below body level. This also led them to speculate that it grazed aquatic plants submerged in rivers. Also, the relative length of its forelimbs and hind limbs would have facilitated this feeding posture. Another hypothesis is that its peg-like teeth, which I already explained in the fourth position, would have allowed it to eat soft aquatic plants. Number 7. It ate stones! It didn't even spare stones! 
However, it didn't do it out of gluttony by any means. Just like birds today, the Diplodocus swallowed stones to help their digestion. Formally speaking, these gastroliths crushed vegetation in their stomachs without having to waste time chewing, so they could assimilate more nutrients. In 1979, the finding of 230 gastroliths separated into two groups in a Diplodocus holorum fossil could suggest that these animals had a digestive system with different cavities, such as what we know today as crop and gizzard. Number 8. Did it have predators? With its size alone, any Diplodocus could have deterred such ferocious predators as the Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, which lived in the same time period and geography. Think about it. One stomp and it would be deadly. Actually, the most feared factor was its tail. It's said that it can make it crack like a whip to drive away its enemies, but if that wasn't enough, it wouldn't hesitate to punish its enemies. Number 9. Scales and Spines in 1990, the discovery of partial Diplodocus skin impressions showed that some had keratin spines, very similar to a modern-day iguana. These spines could have been up to 7.1 inches long and were located predominantly on the tail and possibly also along the back and neck. In addition, their skin had different shaped scales, including rectangular, polygonal, egg-shaped or spherical scales that covered different parts of the body, just like the ones you can now see on a crocodile. Number 10. Do they have an ovipositor? The nesting habits of the Diplodocus are still uncertain, but it's possible that it laid its eggs in a common area, such as shallow pits covered with vegetation. The 1999 BBC documentary Walking with Dinosaurs showed a mother Diplodocus using an ovipositor, an organ used by many female insects to lay eggs. That looks rather disturbing! However, it became known that it was pure speculation on the part of the documentary's author and has no scientific backing. Number 11. Dippy the Diplodocus Possibly one of the most important philanthropists in Diplodocus history was steel magnate Andrew Carnegie. Thanks to Carnegie's funding, a huge and well-preserved Diplodocus skeleton was discovered in Utah's Morrison Formation in 1900. This Diplodocus species was named Diplodocus carnegii in Andrew's honor, of course. Carnegie was so proud, he had casts made of the bones and plaster replicas of the entire skeleton. He called this replica Dippy and donated it to many museums in Europe and South America to the amazement of people all over the world. If you want to see it, the original fossil skeleton is in the Hall of Dinosaurs at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pennsylvania. If you're in Europe, you should know that Dippy will be on display at the Natural History Museum in London until January 2nd, 2023. Number 12. Unique Bones The caudal vertebrae, i.e. the bones in the lower part of the tail of the Diplodocus, are double. Because of the unusual skeleton of the Diplodocus, in 1878, paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh named it after the Greek word diplos, meaning double, and dokos, meaning beam. It's believed that these double beams were to provide additional support and greater mobility. They may have provided support for vertebrae or prevented blood vessels from being crushed if their heavy tail pressed against the ground. Number 13. It wasn't the most intelligent dinosaur of the Jurassic. One thing that the few Diplodocus skulls found have been able to reveal is that they had ridiculously small brains compared to the rest of their bodies. Determining the cognitive capacity of dinosaurs would be highly speculative, but they were animals over 98.4 feet long, with skulls barely 3.2 feet long. How much gray matter do you think was in there? Well, let's just say it was a slow and not very agile animal. Number 14. Andrew, the Young Diplodocus Speaking of skulls, in 2010, the discovery of the fossil skull of a young Diplodocus in Montana named Andrew caused quite a stir in the scientific community. This find reveals that juvenile specimens were not simply smaller versions of adults and may have had different diets. Andrew had 13 teeth in its lower jaws with spoon-shaped edges so that it could cut hard plants to feed on a wider variety of plants. Adults, on the other hand, had only 11 peg-like teeth with which they bit into softer vegetation. Even the youngest may have lived in wooded habitats and herds separated from their parents. This small 9.8-inch skull also showed that Andrew's snout was narrow like a deer, while adult Diplodocus had wider, cow-like snouts. That's right, it's time for the sad fact of the list. Number 15. 
it didn't make it to the Cretaceous period. The Diplodocus became extinct about 152 million years ago, during the Late Jurassic period. This was much earlier than the rest of the sauropods. The group of dinosaurs that includes the Diplodocus and that continued through the Cretaceous period until the end of the dinosaur era about 80 million years ago. The Diplodocus didn't make it that far. There's not much information about why these dinosaurs didn't continue into the Cretaceous period, and scientists hope to find out in the near future. But it may be the biggest secret that the Diplodocus took to the grave. Wait, did it have something to do with its small brain? There are still many mysteries to discover about our friends, the dinosaurs. If you want to keep learning, like this video and subscribe to TrendMax. See you next time.